Hey guys, I'm Tim with Bleep and Jeep. This is my new JD Squared M3 tube bender. This is a manual tube bender. And in today's video, I'll be showing you how to install Swag Off-Road's air hydraulic ram mount. The air hydraulic ram mount converts a manual bender like this JD2 M3 into a hydraulically assisted tube bender, which makes it a lot easier. The way the manual bender works is you feed your tubing in from over here, secure it with this strap, and then you start ratcheting this thing little by little. And as that die rotates, your tube starts bending. And pretty soon, by the time you get around 100 degrees, you've got so much tension on this bent piece of tubing that you're standing four feet away from your bender, trying to look at your dial gauge over here, figuring out how many degrees you bent it. Not to mention you're sitting there reefing on it. And also if you're renting like I happen to be and you're not able to bolt anything to the floor, there's no way you're going to be able to keep something stable enough where you can put the proper leverage on it that you need without the foundation just pulling away. With the hydraulic ram, you can get away from this leverage and having to bolt anything down because it kind of pushes on itself like, like something trying to open and uh, you won't need to bolt anything down. So I made this stand with uh, wheels on it, casters on the back. Rolls great, very easy to move around. And with the hydraulic also, I can sit here and run it. It'll open this thing up, bend the tubing, and I can stand right here and watch my dial gauge very precisely. So I feel with the hydraulic assist, uh, you can bend tubing more accurately and with less effort. What I have here is Swag Off-Road's Air Hydro Ram Mount. Why buy from Swag? Because they put Made in the USA stickers on the outside of their boxes. Let's take a look and see what's inside. This kit comes in a welded version and an unwelded version. And I opted for the unwelded one so that I can weld it up. And by doing that, it'll save you guys a little bit of money. All that was packaging, stickers, and cards. And this is what we're after right here. I guess it's time for the instructions. The instructions look pretty simple. They have um, a couple different variations depending on which bender you have. I have the JD2 Model 3, that's the one I just got. So in this video, we'll be assembling this to uh, JD2 Model 3 specifications. All right, so let's get an idea of how this goes together. Looks like, according to the instructions, these guys are gonna go right about here and plug right in and this tube something like that and we're going to weld this all the way around here maybe the inside if you can reach we're going to burn this tube in also this tube insert comes with the bushings already in it be sure to take those out before you start welding everything up and then for the JD2 Model 3 bender, this will go completely flush to the outside here on both sides. If you get some small magnets like this, these are going to help you center everything up, keep it square, and hold it all in place at the same time. These are about $3 a piece at Harbor Freight. It can be a little finicky though getting them on because they like to pull everything. But you can see by doing that we're nice and square. Get one here on this side. And just make sure that magnet's flat everywhere and square on both sides. That'll allow us to center up our tube right where we want it and tack it in place.
You may have noticed while I was tacking this, the camera was getting kind of weird. And I, I haven't had this happen before, but for some reason, every time I'd arc off while recording, the camera would snap a picture in the middle of the recording process and then go back to recording. And one time it stopped recording. Uh, so I don't know what kind of electrical interference that would be. I haven't seen that problem before. But anyways, I hope that wasn't too distracting and I hope you can uh, get an idea if you're of how this tacks together. So after you get it tacked up, it should look something like this. I tacked my tube in uh, four spots per side and I just tacked the front and back of the uh, these brackets here. You could tack more, it's not going to hurt. Um, I'm going to keep it nice and open though for a bead to try to make it as clean as possible. And if it didn't have this tube, I would certainly tack tack this piece more on both sides because if you lay a big hot bead here with only these two end tacks it's going to contract and suck towards the weld but with this tube I think we have enough stability to weld this however we want without it pulling one way or another as long as we have it adequately tacked. After you get your tube welded in and your brackets welded in on the bottom side and the top side, burn the uh, outside of the box next. Once you get your first saddle bracket welded, go ahead and move on to the second. There's nothing to add to this, you just weld the uh, areas where it comes together. Alright, now that the saddle brackets are welded up, we're ready to assemble them and install them on the bender. So this is the ram that the Swag Off-Road bracket is designed for. This is Harbor Freight, item number 94562, uh, in case you're wondering. This little cross pin thing here, the jacket comes with this design to loosen and tighten that. But Swag Off-Road provides us with a, a nice little thumb knob instead, or actually to overlap it. This, is, this thing's solid. That's cool. That's quality stuff. So we're going to drive this pin out, just slip this over the shaft and reinsert that pin. And then while this is mounted on our bender, instead of using the jack to loosen and tighten this to relieve pressure, we just have this nice little knob. Little PV blaster. Cool. Hey, we did it. All right, here's the thumb knob provided by Swag. Yeah, oh, this Chinese junk. Not this. That, that's the Chinese junk. I'm going to have to get it on with a little bit of persuasion here. Just line up the holes and reuse our uh, piece of nail. That's what it looks like at least. Okay, I think it's a miracle, but we got our uh, thumb knob on. That cross pin was kind of ridiculous. You might replace it with a roll pin or whatever you want. This particular one was bent and crooked and flat. So, anyways, that's done. Before we go any further, we need to bleed this new jack. You do that by pulling this rubber plug out, which may be impossible to put back in, by the way. And then take your handle and manually, well first make sure your valve is closed with that knob we just put on. And then take your handle and the instructions say just to slowly jack it up until a little bit of oil comes out of that hole. And that will bleed all of the air out of here. And then it says top off with hydraulic oil. With your jack bled and these cool, go ahead and insert your bushings here. They should go down all the way in. 
maybe use a vise or something to tap them down with for your hand that'll work just like that and then we're ready to install this part right where your handle goes on your tube bender this bolt furthest back on your tube bender is the one that's going to come off you might have to loosen both of them to get your handle off handle out of the way and both of your bushings in place put your primary saddle bracket right where the handle used to line up run the bolt back through With a little bit of persuasion everything goes right through With that bracket installed, we can slide our jack into place here. Now install the other half of your saddle bracket. We'll leave that loose for now until we get our jack attached on the other end. Then we're going to remove this bolt. And then this piece supplied by Swag Off-Road drops in here and because so much of this jack hangs off the back side it wants to pivot up since that ends heavier so your centering collar is actually going to go on the top side to keep the ram centered on this sleeve You might need a little pry bar or something to push the ram arm down. It's awfully tight. And just get it centered up the best you can. Somewhere about there. All right, and hopefully that'll keep it nice and centered. So you have a nice straight push as this thing expands. Go ahead and start tightening everything down here. Seems pretty snug. Alright, that's how you install Swag Off-Road's Air Hydraulic Ram Bracket on a JD2M3 manual tube bender. Ready to see if it works? Now we're going to take all the slack out of the die. Okay, right there, it's nice and tight. Now we're going to set our degree wheel to zero. And because of spring back, I'm going to bend a little bit over 90, but I want a 90 degree piece, so I'm going to bend to 94, and hopefully it springs back to 90. There we go. So it looks like it got to about uh, 65 degrees after spring back uh, with the first stroke. And now we need to pull this pin out and repin in the die to go further. Okay, so to repin, we just need to relieve pressure. All right, after you get this moved back to your second position, repin in your new hole. Tighten your valve on your jack. And then continue bending.
Now we just gotta finagle our piece out of here. We'll check. And there you have it. 90 degree bend. Let's check it with the framing square to make sure. It's a little bit hard to show on camera, but you can, uh, maybe you can see from where you are or you can take my word for it, but that, as far as I can tell, is perfectly 90 degrees. I can't thank the guys enough at Swag Off-Road for making this video possible and sending this out. Thank you guys. And if you aren't familiar with Swag Off-Road, uh, please go to their website, swagoffroad.com. Look at all the neat stuff they have. They have a lot of tools, a lot of um, tool upgrades for uh, Harbor Freight items, kind of like this Ramjack, all kinds of stuff. They make uh, Jeep bumpers as well, among other things. So be sure to check them out, swagoffroad.com. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. Please thumbs up and subscribe to Bleep and Jeep. Be sure to check out bleepandjeep.com. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. And we'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, do you think you can make a video as good or better than this one? If so, we'd love for you to join our team. A lot of people don't know this, but YouTube actually pays when people watch your videos. You know those little ads that pop up before the video? If a viewer watches those for 30 seconds or longer, the advertiser has to pay YouTube, and in turn, YouTube has to pay you. Also, those little ads that pop up at the bottom of the video, in the middle of the video, if somebody clicks those, then you get paid as well. So. We are looking for more partners to join and grow our YouTube channel. If you want to do any kind of videos that pertain to Jeeps or off-roading, welding, building things, that kind of thing, make a video, let me see it, and uh, we'll let you know if you make the cut or not. So thanks for watching. Again, make sure to like and subscribe. Tell your friends about us, and we'll see you in the next video.